This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing News, joined by Egis Klimas. We are in, I've, I've already forgotten where it is. I know I was in Valencia about an hour ago, but where are we now, Egis? Gandhi, I believe. Nice place, interesting place, quiet place. Very nice. It reminds me the I had a preparation camp for my fighters in Oxnard, California. Uh, weather, scenery, uh, the city with not distractions for the fighters, good gym, um, everything, everything needs to prepare for the fight has everything. So I think uh, by the team it was a good choice for Alexander to train here to prepare for the fight. And of course, he's now going to be here for, for an extra three months uh, after the delay and the postponement of the Tyson Fury fight. Um, just your initial thoughts. I, I understand you weren't very pleased at the at the news when it first broke. Have you um have you calmed down a little bit since then? I guess, or is it still? Um, I'm always calm down. I'm always down. I'm you no, know, but uh, sometimes just get things get emotional when you have almost three years trying to to go on the same path, knocking on the door, knocking on the door, and. Uh, uh, always something happening. It's Tyson not agreeing on this. Tyson doesn't agree this. The promoters between them negotiating and uh, like uh, like uh, seems to me like always backing out. Is the Tyson team backing out? Is it promoters backing out? We don't know because when we had talking with a promoter to promoter. It's always, oh no, Tyson is not going to agree on this. Well, Tyson is not going to agree on that. Did Tyson not agree? Promoters not agree? We don't know. We're hearing many things. There is not a good relationship between Fury team and uh, promotions. But again, we're just hearing stuff. Maybe it's not the truth. I'm not going to uh, say 100%. And you know, when you're trying to put the three year same and you know, and you're knocking and you you banging in the same wall, same and the same, you know, he's not agreeing, he doesn't want this, he doesn't want that. We already agreed. Okay, let's do seventy thirty. Usi gets the thirty, you get seventy. Again, something is coming. No, this is not what we want. And now enough it's enough, you know, when they you know, Alexander just says, So oh, screw all of that, I don't want that. So and it's not happening, you know. Then, then okay, we're great. We're gonna do Saudi. Okay, I got I got talk with uh, with um, uh, Usyk's manager Spencer. He called me. I flew to New York. We met with uh, people from Saudi and and the Spencer and myself. Two years, boom, walk from my room on a handshake. His deal is done. So I thought it's the easiest deal done. We could we could put together. Wow, boom, we got the date, December 23. Great. So we go to see he fight. Wow, he got cut. So December 23 has to be postponed. So we postponed to February 17th. One one week before we're gonna go to Saudi. Two weeks before the fight. Boom. You wake up in the morning and uh, okay, he got a cut. What this can come to my mind? course all kind of different wild stuff coming into my mind so uh, I called I called in the social media I called Tyson as a coward what they meant by that I didn't mean he's scared I didn't mean he is coward like he's scared to to fight Usyk. No, he cannot. You know, he's a professional fighter. He's been in the ring so many times. He can't be scared. But actually, you know, most of the heavyweights are scared to go into the ring. I'm not going to name it, but I know a few. And uh, he is not scared of Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk is a small. He is a big. Why does he have to be scared? All he's scared, he's scared to lose to Alexander Usyk. 
This is what his fear is. He might not going to feel it, but that's what it is. You mentioned there about your, your initial reaction being quite emotional. Um, obviously, everything that happened up to that point obviously played a factor. Do you still feel the way you do now, as you felt uh, when you first got the news? Or have you calmed down? Have you, are you, do you think about it differently now? No, of course you know, Of course I calmed down. You know, at the, 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 that point, you know, you got, the, you got, your, you, you got your emotions, you know, you... you Look, even if I called him some names, he calls everybody. He calls everybody piece of shit, rats, blah, 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 blah. So who the fuck he thinks he are to call everybody and not to be called? So the one thing I didn't call, which is somebody translating the media or he thinks about that, what I call his wife. It's not truth. It is not the truth. I didn't call his wife. I called, he has so many bitches in his camp, what maybe one of them can hit him with a frying pan. That's what I had in mind. But I would never ever would say something, even to my biggest enemy. I don't have enemies, but even with the biggest people who I don't like or whatever, I would never say anything about their wives. This is insulting. And I, I would feel if somebody will say something about my wife, how I would feel. And I would never, ever would do that, say that. But again, you know, if, if he thinks like that, let him think. We've mentioned it a couple of times in this interview already, the last three years. It seems to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that Alexander Usyk's cruiserweight career, compared to his heavyweight career, obviously very good fighters that he boxed, but was more straightforward politically than his heavyweight career. Would you agree with that? Yes, because because what happened, you know, in our fortune, Alexander was already a WBO champion, and the tournament started. So the tournament put everybody in right place. So the tournament was the best thing what can happen for Alexander. And because everybody knew he was the most wanted in that tournament as a boxer, so it was easy for us to arrange the smooth path to go for him to undisputed. And at heavyweight, obviously, even the initially before boxing Anthony Joshua for the first time was difficult, even though he was mandatory. Alexander seems to be a very cool, calm guy. Was he always cool and calm throughout that? Were, were there difficult moments for him? Because it can't have been easy for somebody like him, a world-class fighter, elite fighter, who wants to challenge himself against the best, who now has to hear about percentages and rematch clauses and this fight might happen and this fight might happen. Or does he just shut it off and leave it to you? Well, then it comes to his career. Alexander Usyk was always the fighter on the road. In the beginning, he fought, I believe, nine fights. He fought back home in Kiev the, the, to start with. And after that, he was always fighting in somebody's backyard. Poland, Latvia, Moscow, Germany, UK, United States, I mean, all over the place, but not home. So he is already used to fighting aboard. And his attitude is he's always smiling, he's always calm until the minutes comes for him to go in the ring. And then you see a completely different person. Just want to talk about the uh, the ten million. I think it's ten million dollars. Um, the ten million dollar forfeit fee clause um, that's been inserted into the bout for Fury Usyk on May 18th. Now, my understanding from the the press conference that we had slightly earlier that was something that was insisted upon by yourself. Uh, what can you tell me about that? When these things happen, we we be in a team, and that was more like. A, from one of the trainers of Alexander Sergei, uh, let's do the same date. And we asked 
people can we give Alexander to fight the same date and then we can fight Tyson, which is uh, people in Saudi, they understood if Alexander going to fight on February 17th, it's going to be a risk to put him on the May 18th, as we saw it before, well, things happening in a fight. So he's not going to be ready. And uh, my understanding was His Excellency didn't want to lose May 18th date. So that's why he said we're going to fight in the May 18th date. But before we agreed and before we made a deal, uh, we asked, I personally asked, uh, what Sergey suggested to enclose in contract what the date is going to be guarantee. In this case, if Tyson is not going to be able to come to May 18th, Alexander going to fight no matter what on that date, which is uh, His Excellency guaranteed that. And then we asked, we said, we wanted to put penalty if Tyson is not coming. So, but they turn around and they said, the penalty then it has to come from both sides. It cannot be come from one side. So actually that came from our side to put that into the, into the contract. And just to confirm for people who maybe haven't seen some of the other videos that it would go from the fighter as well. It wouldn't be something that's paid for by Saudi Arabia. It would come direct from each fighter. Directly. That is, has to come directly from a fighter, from his next purse or, or, or previous purse or whatever is going to happen. But the fighter must, it, 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 it will come from a fighter's purse. You mentioned Alexander Usyk there and kind of his career at cruiserweight now at heavyweight he's one fight away from becoming a, a two-weight undisputed champion you've worked with some magnificent fighters in your career as a manager where is Usyk among them among the fight what is Usyk right now he, well, he's on top of the world where does he rank with some of the other fighters that you've worked with at their best I suppose well look all of the fighters to me, just like just like uh, my children would be. If you come to the father and he has a five kids and you ask uh, whom do you like the most, how can you say? It's next to impossible. Uh, same thing if I'm going to cut you in a big finger or a small finger, or, or small finger it's, the, 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 it's going to be the same pain. Uh, Out of all of my fighters, Alexander today achieved the most. You know, he became a cruiserweight, undisputed. He is a right now uh, undefeated heavyweight, only one title away, and has a very big possibility to become undisputed in a heavyweight. Yes, he achieved the most, of course. There is no, there is no doubt. Um, there is another good fighters in, in the, what, I, what I manage. Yes, of course, a lot. Vasily Lomachenko is an unbelievable fighter, unbelievable fighter. His career didn't go smooth as, as he wanted. Uh, he always was jumping in a bigger weight class where he is. He has uh, ambitions. He doesn't want to go back into the smaller weight class because he already came into the bigger weight class. So he doesn't see it. So he, he has his ego, which is, you know... Uh, all we have to do is just, uh, just, uh, just to respect what the man wants. Look at the Sergey Kovalev career. Sergey Kovalev went through the hell of a career. Everybody liked him as a fighter. Um, uh, Jani Beck, Alim Kanuli, uh, Kazakh style, unbelievable middleweight. Champion in the t uh, two sanctions already. Looking forward to... to, to uh, uh, Unified more belts. Look, there, there is a, even even the guys who didn't became a champion. I had a, a good good fighters. Did you know with Usyk because you you've managed him for a long long time? Did you know that he could go on to be what he is on the verge of becoming an undisputed heavyweight champion? Did you know as early as as kind of the early times of working with him? I believe him. I believe him from the first day we start working. 
not even working from the day I met. From the day I met, um, they came to United States. I got him a contract with a top rank. Didn't was a good contract. Um, I asked Bob, does he signing him because just uh, Lomachenko and the Bob says yes. So then I said, Alexander, I said, no, you, you can't fight, sign here. You go back, sign with, uh, with, uh, with your local promoters or maybe we can find some different promoters and uh, and then do what you're doing and uh, I will step in the night, I will need to step in. Like after nine, nine fights, I believe, or whatever. We met in New York and uh, he goes like, uh, I think it's a time for you, you know, to, 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 to step into my career. And uh, like 2014 or 2015. Up until this moment, what's been your greatest night with Alexander Usyk? What one memory do you think back and go, ah, that was great? Moscow, when he became undisputed. I mean... Amazing performance. Uh, and uh, amazing performance and, and the night and the, and the crowd. And I mean, that was, that was something else. And, you know, you see a Muhammad Ali's wife bringing him and giving a trophy. He's the very first winning the Muhammad Ali Trophy and, and all these belts and, uh, and uh, oh, phew, that was emotional night. That was a good night. How did it compare to beating Anthony Joshua the first time in London? <laughs> also very good. <laughs> Look, <laughs> every single, every single performance we is We could a, go braid this week. Exactly. Could well, you know, th of course, you know, winning Anthony Joshua, 96 or 93,000 people in in the arena in, in the stadium and and it's unb uh, oh. silent no 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 words to say does it i mean just literally talking about it there when you're talking about Lomachenko Kovalev Alim Hanouli Usyk because you're around like the highest of high level boxers all the time do you ever because sometimes in my job, which is nowhere near as important as you, I take it for granted sometimes. And sometimes I need somebody to go, and I think, wow, this is amazing. Those special moments that you've had in your career, do they become normal after a while? Or do you still appreciate them? Do you still go, oh my God, this is unbelievable. This is amazing. Because you don't strike me as somebody who, who gets excited for no reason, you know? No, of course. Every single moment is, is is something else. Every single, every single win, every single, every single good performance. Uh, you know, we're talking and talking weeks and weeks after it, and then, uh, uh, of course, it's uh, of course I'm getting excited. Of course, I know I have a feelings too, and uh, and uh, and you know, then, then the guy wins. You know, it's very very interesting moments. Let's put it this way. Back to this fight. Uh, there seems to be a feeling among some boxing fans that Tyson Fury maybe is not the Tyson Fury of the Vladimir Klitschko fight, the second Deontay Wilder fight. Do you agree with that? Well, you know, he's not, he's not old as a fighter. He has a good IQ. He knows, he knows what he's doing in the ring. I think... Uh, I think he can be very, very challengeable for Alexander. I, it's not going to be easy fight for Alexander. That's no, that's for fact. That's for sure. He's going to be competitive fight, and uh, but again, depends what he's unpredictable. Again, you know, so we don't know what he's going to bring into the ring. Maybe this three months going to give him a better, more time to prepare if he's going to take him seriously. Who knows? In your position as a manager, you deal with a lot of sort of Eastern European fighters. Have you ever managed a British fighter? I never managed a British fighter. Would you ever manage a British fighter? If he's a good fighter, if he's good, good uh, human being, if he is good, what he does, I would definitely manage. Why not? 
I don't have nothing against the British. I right now I just uh, I just became a, a manager. Me and my partner Jose de la Cruz. We just uh, not just but already like a, already more than a year. We manage three of uh, uh, Vargas, Fernando Vargas, ex champion. Mm -hmm. He has the three sons, and all of them three is fighting. Uh, Emiliano is very good. So I, you know, I I became a managing all those three kids. So the reason why I ask is because as a British boxing fan, media, whatever, whenever I go to like America, when you talk about British fighters, America is ah, British fighters, no good. And I just wanted to know what your perception is of British fighters and British boxing. and Because I know you, you had Shavkat Rakimov come over and box Joe Cordina. What's your kind of view on British fighters and British boxing? Look. And be honest. I'm going to be very honest. Good. You know, a few names. Joe Kalzaki. What, he's no good fighter? Come on, give me a break. Um, there is a many, many, many good fighters in, 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 in uh, British fighters. And British fans, you never see anywhere in the world fans like in Britain. Tyson Fury fighting White at the Wembley Stadium, December 3, cold raining and you have a full stadium of fans give me a break show me another show me another country where can do like this never ever nowhere fans and fans they understand boxing um, me and Kovalev came to fight cleverly, cleverly in in uh, in Wales, 2000, 2013, okay? We go, we go with Kovalev in the ring, we hear yelling, booming, booming, throwing uh, beer cans or something like, and, uh, and then he was done. Everybody was clapping and everybody, the, the way he gave a performance, People were waiting for him out of the ring to make a pictures. Love it. Uh, final uh, questions I have are on Vasily Lomachenko. I just spoke to Russ Amber, of course. You know, Team Usyk, Team Lomachenko. He's he's been around. He sees a lot a lot of fighters, and he said something that I found interesting that <coughs> Lomachenko, because Lomachenko has, as you mentioned earlier, wanted to fight in the lightweight division, wanted to really test himself, that he feels, and I agree with him, that Lomachenko is underappreciated and disrespected by some, not all, but some boxing fans. Would you agree with that? Um, Lomachenko is maybe, uh, in my opinion, he is, uh, he is a different, from most of the fighters. He doesn't talk much. He wants to show what he capable and what he can do in the ring. Not like most of the fighters. They like to, you know, to, to, to talk, to spit in the face, to, you know, to jump on a, not him. He's very, very quiet. Uh, I would maybe say, when it comes to talking, not to fighting, he's a little bit shy. Uh, he doesn't want to speak in English because he cannot explain his emotions and, and the, what he's thinking. And for me, for example, it's very hard to translate what he's saying. Then he, then he starts talking about, because his vocabulary is very, very rich. And uh, as for me, being Russian, not uh, my first language, and the way he speaks, it's, it's hard for me even to translate his, his emotions and the way he's thinking. That's why he doesn't like to talk much. And, uh, but then he comes to his performance when he does what he does in the ring. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, in my opinion, 
in my personal view, he beat Teofimo Lopez in the 135. He won that fight. The judges screwed him on that fight. At the 135, definitely he beat Devin Haney. There is no doubt. Uh, many people say that, and that we say that. The judges ate him up again. And what it says about the men, two of these guys at the 135, they couldn't do nothing to Loma. Loma, Loma won both of them. Look what... Lopez did at 140 with Josh Taylor. Look what Haney did with progress at the 140. What does that mean? At the, at the, even at the bigger weight class, they competed and they beat all these champions at the 140, but they couldn't do nothing with Loma at the 135. What does that take Loma? Lomachenko, I know he's boxing Cambosos for the IBF title. Could we ever see him at 140? Do you think he could ever do it? I mean, I know his skill will, will always take him to a certain level if he's at 140, but do you think he could ever go there maybe for a Haney rematch or something like that? Or do you think 135, which is already too big, is his maximum? He's forcing himself to make 135. Yeah. So what, what 140 are we talking about now? And he will never go down to 130 because he already put his his limit. I, okay, I couldn't get nothing in the 130. I'm coming to 135. So now he's saying at the 135. And I asked personally, I asked, why don't we go back to 140? We're going to kill a division. You become undisputed in a second at the 130. And he says, no. I already pushed myself to be a 135 how it's going to be now for me to go down to 130 i am here i need i need to i, I need to prove myself here okay i guess final question that i have is for you um and it's kind of it's something i actually mentioned to kathy duva a long time ago like when i was a kid growing up there wasn't a lot of eastern european professional fighters very 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 rare now a lot of the best fighters in the world come from ukraine russia the eastern side of of europe and obviously central asia with kazakhstan and etc you've been a big part of that over the last 10 15 years bringing this talent wave into the into the mainstream in boxing how much pride does that give you, knowing that in 10, 15, 20 years time, there's going to be a, a new, maybe not a new Lomachenko, but there's going to be, <laughs> but there's going to be a new wave of Eastern fighters who say, ah, when I was young, I watched Lomachenko, I watched Usyk, and you've been a big part of that. So in a way, you've really helped bring that Eastern European talent and everything that comes with it into the mainstream. Do you understand that? Do you think about that? Actually, no, I don't think about that. I'm just, you know, um, I would never ever thought it would be my life. It will be, it will be what I do right now. You know, I just, I never chased money in boxing. I never chased glory. I never chased famous. I just, I was just going with a guys, trying to help them, trying to do what they do, and uh, and. Um, I love what I do, and probably that's why I don't feel like I'm working. I can fly 12 hours to this fight here, there, so I'm always on the plane, and uh, I don't think about what is going to give me, you know, what I'm going to get, what I'm going to gain. I just. I just love. I can I can woke up one o'clock in the morning if uh, other country is a uh, different time zone to talk about you not know, about the fight or to make something happen. So it's I enjoy what I do. Do you think that that part of you enjoying what you do, not doing it for money, not doing it for fame? Do you think that's why you've been successful? Because a lot of people do come into boxing for their own reasons, for money, for glory, whatever they call it, and they go quickly. Do you think that's been a part of why you've been successful? Probably, I would say so. I think I agree. 
<laughs> Agus Klimas, thank you very much for speaking to Boxing News. Um, hopefully catch up with you soon. Hopefully catch up with you for May 18th. Thanks very much for speaking to us. I'll catch up with you thank soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.